Hi, I'm Corbin Lunsford from Green Dream Group in Chicago. On behalf of the Building Performance Workshop, I'd like to demonstrate BPI standardized five-point combustion testing. Now, this video is meant as a review uh, for professionals. If you have not received formal training in this, do not try this at home. Combustion testing has five parts to it. In order of how they flow through the system, number one is fuel comes into the appliance. We check for leaks. Second part is the fuel mixes with air and gets combusted. We check the, co the content of those combustion gases specifically for carbon monoxide. Third piece is those combustion gases have a chance to escape into the house under a draft hood. We're going to test for that. The fourth piece is we're going to test for the draft pressure inside the flue. And the last and most important piece, because we are whole home professionals, we're going to test for the relationship of this CAS to the rest of the house. And that is something that no other professional is going to do. So if you need a review on how to create worst case conditions, feel free to visit our uh, worst case depressurization video, which is simply a review, again, not a formal training. First thing we need to do when we step into the CAS is to start monitoring our carbon monoxide levels in the ambient air. They cannot exceed 35 parts per million, according to BPI standards. Before we test anything, we need to visually inspect first. Inspection always precedes testing. So first, we're going to check out what we've got in our CAS. And here we have an ambient draft water heater. We can inspect the uh, gas line for any obvious disconnections or problems. We check out the condition of it. It looks relatively new. We can see here on the label it's got an R6.7 inside, uh, which means it might not need a water heater blanket. We look at the top for any corrosion, which we see some here, and that might be evidence of water damage or of condensation from the combustion gases, and that's important because it might be a sign of spillage having happened once in the past. We check out the flues and make sure that they're pitched properly, which is a quarter inch per foot, and these seem to be fine. Now, the ambient draft water heater is commonly vented with our induced draft furnace, and we're going to open this guy up and check out the inside of that as well. So inside the unit, we've got our draft inducer, we've got our gas valve and our burners. The unit looks relatively clean, so we can assume that it's well maintained by the homeowner, which is good. Down here we've got our blower compartment. Last thing I want to check on this is to make sure that the furnace filter is relatively clean, and it appears to be. If it was not clean, then I would want to remove this because I'd want to uh, increase the airflow through it to make sure that I'm going to be able to get my worst case. So the last part before I leave this is I want to pilot both of these appliances by turning the water heater to pilot and kicking the furnace off at the emergency shutoff here. Next, we're going to baseline our gas sniffer and do a gas leak detection on the gas lines. I want to get my gas sniffer to be a little more sensitive, so I get it up to a gallop. I'm going to start at the valve, and I could actually go up here to see if the valve solenoid is shutting properly. And that might be an indication that this valve actually isn't closing all the way. I'm also going to, uh, so I make Make note of that. I would also run this along all of the joints and valves. And if this were to scream at me, like so, then I would take my uh, gas detection soap bubbles, which is a highly technical piece of equipment, and paint around this look for bubbles. So after we've run a gas leak detection on all of the gas supply line that we could find, and we've tagged any of the leaks that we found, next we're going to drill all the holes to prepare for our test. And we're going to be using a Unibit, which is my favorite tool. We're going to drill two holes. One of them is for a draft test with the uh, probe that I have. It's a 2 on the Unibit. And using our combustion analyzer, which is a 6, the probe size, I'm going to go ahead and drill holes here in the in the flue, and also 18 inches up for the draft. And I'm going to do the same thing on the water heater. Next, in order to prepare for worst case depressurization, which is what we test these appliances under, we're going to need to get our baseline CAS pressure with reference to outside. And right now we're hovering in the negative threes. We're going to write that number down and then immediately proceed to create worst case for the CAS. If you need a review on how to create worst case, feel free to watch our video. Uh, called worst case CAS depressurization. Next, we need to baseline our combustion analyzer outdoors because it's an air quality testing device and we need to get fresh air. Now I need to prepare for my testing by inserting all my probes so that I don't have to think about that once the combustion appliances are actually running. So I'm going to insert my uh, water heater combustion analyzer uh, in the water heater specifically because it's the smallest unit in this CAS, so it's the one we're most worried about. 
I insert the combustion analyzer below dilution air. So before it has a chance to di get diluted with room air, it's very important to do that. That's why we drilled the hole in the draft hood here. We also need to insert our draft probe, which connects with the manometer. It's a simple copper pipe. And now we're ready and wired up to run this test.